Okay, you got another box project. Um, this box is actually a very easy box to make. Um, it's just a, a simple um, six drawers and they're quite big so they're easy to cut out and everything. I've got, um, I'm not actually even sure what this piece of wood is here. Maybe user all know but I have no clue what it is. I've actually got a big chunk of it but it's not very thick. So I may well need to put a uh, back onto this, um, which I'll slice off another piece of that, but I haven't got that prepared today. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the outer shape of this box cut out. And then I'll come back and we'll cut, do here. So we'll take that bits down to there. So we'll cut the outer box first of all, just following the outer line and then we'll come back and cut the inner box out. Okay, that's the um, outer box done. Um, I don't worry about it looking rough or anything like that because all, the, all of this gets sanded. So now I'm going to go back and come in the bottom here and I shall curve all the way around to here. Actually, I shall probably come in this end first because that takes us to a point. And then I'll reverse it out and come back through this way. that's the outer box cut. Um, the next thing I'll actually do now is um, I'm going to actually take, I actually hold these with tape until I uh, get everything in place just to hold the shape just in case it does have an incline to, to move out of shape um, and I'll take that before and then I just slip it on and we'll come back to the bandsaw and start cutting these boxes out. Okay, that's all the boxes done now. Um, they cut quite well, nice dry wood. Um, that's my cat Lily, wants to get involved. Right, I'm going to go to the bandsaw now. First of all, I'm going to draw the pencil lines on this. As you know from if you've watched previous ones, I always do them by hand, no measuring. And um, we'll get the fronts and the backs cut off these and then. Um, get ready for the drawing out of the drawers. So once I've cut the front and the back on, I tend to actually put it back into the mould um, so that I can understand where the upright position is and then I draw the cuts out for the inner drawers once those are done. This um, top part here, I might have glued it on a bit too much but I'm hoping to be able to take that off um, to use the template again. So uh, yeah, so that's what I'll do. It'll all be on time lapse, and uh, we'll cut back. Come back when they're all cut out.
Okay, that's the uh, fronts and the backs cut off. I'm going to place them into this now. That's what I was just doing, ready to draw the outline for the drawers in it. So obviously this is the bottom and this is the top and I just basically just do a little line in there as just sort of a reminder more so where the opening of the box needs to be so that when I cut out um, I don't get confused on the, um, the top side of the box. So I shall finish doing those and we'll then go to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut the inner boxes out. is cut. Um, the next thing that I'll do now is actually the glue up. Uh, I won't do that on camera because it's just pretty straightforward. Put glue on there, glue on there, glue it up together and um, then I'll come back when these are all glued up and uh, ready for the sanding part next. Um, when I cut the front and the back off, I forgot to say, I actually sanded all surfaces at that point um, ready for the glue up, so so they're all sanded and ready to go. So I shan't be doing the glue up today, I'm going to do it overnight, so um, I shall come back when those bits are done and I'm hoping by then that I'll have the back of the box for that cut off because we'll be getting ready to sand all these down and glue up the main part of the box. I will um, be then going on to do, I might actually do that next, I think we'll do the front of the box next, we'll get the wood all cut ready, glued in place, ready for cutting out. Um, I'm thinking of using quite a dark wood on there but um, I'll come back when I start that bit. Okay that's the boxes glued. Um, still to sand them but that's some glued up flying. I use one of these which is uh, a drum sander that you can put onto a drill and I have a pillar drill so I put it onto that. Um, I use it for rounding all the edges that can be rounded off on that and the ones that are too, if there's corners that are too tight like maybe in there and that, I use a, a spindle sander for that so uh, that's how I sand those. I'll, I will do that off camera all the sanding. The next bit um, really that we have to get done here is um, this is from the template that was on the front and all I did was cut it into sections because um, the way I like the wood to go on is to a bit like intarsia really um, so the edges are all, once these are cut, the edges are all be sanded on. So this is a quarter of an inch wood that I've used here and uh, the next thing that we'll do now is we'll go onto the bandsaw. I mean this could be cut on a scroll saw but I'm going to go to the bandsaw and cut these out and we'll come back then and look at getting them attached onto here and the other methods that are used to sand as well. Right, that's us back. Um, these bits have all been cut out ready. Um, I have to go on and do the sanding and that just to get the edges nice because you see where you cut you get horrid edges and I need to round them off and, and finish these ones and in between the joins I actually um, sand them down at like a 45 degree just so that they slot together and it looks more like intarsia. The boxes, I went away, sanded all those and they've actually been given the first coat of sand sealer so 
um, really and I've, then I sanded them down to 600 they're lovely and smooth and that now and I probably won't need to give anything more on there other than a, a coat of lacquer and um, then I usually sand with 400 between each coat of lacquer um, but I don't like a shine so I, I limit it to maybe two coats of lacquer and that's it so the drawers are ready um, I won't show you any more about the drawers because they're, they're virtually ready so it's just lacquer finish on that um, so I'm going to go away and sand these down I'll show a little bit on no I won't I'll come back and show you it at the end I'll go away and sand all these bits down and then I'm going to just glue them into place where they are now really and then we'll come back because um, I've still to finish the box and everything yet so um, we'll uh, get that bits done also I'm just going to put uh, I'm just going to sand this off ready so that it's um, the front parts finished because once this is on it's very difficult to sand there so um, I'll get the front sanded obviously I still got not got the back cut I'm going to get that done this afternoon um, but it's only a matter of me putting this on top of it and um, tracing around it and cutting it ready for gluing on but I'll, we'll go and get these all sanded down and glued in place and I'll come back um, like I say I'm not going to show you that because it, it, I just use a Dremel to, to do all the edges and just glue in place okay <clears throat> that's the outer box sanded I've managed to get a piece which is actually an inch thick for the back I've gone away and cut that all needs to be sanded flat now both sides because um, it's still very raggy dirty looking wood so uh, <clears throat> I have to sand all that down and once it's sanded I shall glue the the uh, main body to the back the trees done it's not glued in place um, I just rounded off these edges here and then just those are the ones that like the intarsia look so they go down three quarters to, to halfway through the wood with that one and then just a slight rounding off with that should look quite nice once it's um, glued in place and sand sealed so next really is just all the finishing I have to glue that into place and get the back cut sanded and glued on and we are done um, <coughs> I've got handles to do very last but we'll get the box and that done and I will come back and show you because these handles on this box it's the only box I do with this specific handle so I'll take you back to show you that so it'll be right at the end we'll get this bit all finished and I'm just going to come back with handles right I wanted to come back before I went any further I um, glued all this on overnight um, I have to do probably a little bit of at the edges where you you cut sorry that's the cat let me let her in yeah where um, once you've glued them on you've got to be really as accurate as possible really but sometimes you find that there's a little bit of overlap on the edge there now I haven't got much on here today sometimes I do let me take these out but what ends up happening if you've got um, like a ridge that overlaps it will stop the drawer sliding in and out properly so what I tend to do is just using the Dremel again just um, go back in over the edges just to make sure that they are cut back properly um, and then I've still to that's the back on this box I have still to sand all of this um, yet I'm going to go away and do that now um, just basically using a normal sander and then I won't come back to this bit now until the end we're going to go and do the handles next and I'm going to show you how I do those so uh, 
so yeah and then we'll come back at the end but I'll show you how I do these handles for this particular box okay um, welcome back so I'm going to be doing the handles for these and on this particular box I do um, a handle from clay um, any of these clays I mean I have a, a, a big box full of all different selections from all different companies these tend to be what I use mostly um, just purely because I've just got hold of these really um, so I have a selection of them here now the handles I've actually already done but I wanted to show you how I did them and I've done them because I needed to do them when I was dust free and in a nice clean area so they were actually done in the house but obviously I want to show you what I've done for these and then I've got the finished ones here and I shall show you those after so basically this one I all this box I call myself an apple tree box so as you can imagine I want to do an apple tree um, an apple so I basically just I'm going to move this camera up a little bit and then hopefully I'll be able to zoom you down right into here now right so I've just got a bit of red a bit of brown and a bit of green and the first thing that I do is basically roll it into a ball sit it on a flat surface and try and push it down a little bit while still keeping it round I have some little plastic tools that I just use here for just um, shaping the um, these are nothing fancy I'll put links to where I get everything below um, metal clays have just about everything so um, I'll link them in so basically I wanted to do the top of the apple first so obviously it's got a recess in and it's usually a stalk that you can't take it off the tree so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to zoom you down for this I basically I'm just presuming this is going to be the top because this is going to be the handle where we pull it out on the drawer. I just push a hole in the top first of all. Now I'm not going to be able to keep this perfectly round because I'm going to be needing to show you. Just like that. I need this to be the flat end because that's the end that's going to be glued. So I just push a little hole in the top like that. That's the red part done. This is so simple. Now this stuff gets baked in an oven and each pack, depending, they're usually roughly about the same. Um, it's usually 110, this is 100, and Scorpy's 130 Celsius for 15 to 30 minutes and Fimo is 110 for 30 minutes. So they've all got their own instructions on it, whatever ones you buy. So basically, I just roll this out to a small worm now. And then I cut it off so that it's got a little point on one end and a little flat end on the other. So it looks like it's been cut off a tree. And then I just pop that into the top there and then slant it over to one side. Now I've got green now because I'm going to do, now these colours are quite vibrant and I do tend to use the quite vibrant greens on it, I don't know, I think people really like it. I do prefer this type of red but I didn't have any when I did mine. But anyway, I'm going to just break a little bit of this off and soften it up. Um, when you use the proper clays, this is what I found. If you use a good a good clay like any of these really here, um, they're pretty easy to work. I mean, I think Fimo does a soft one um, if you find your hands get um, sore, and it is a, it is really easy to roll that one. So basically, I'm just going to flatten the 
the green one out. I actually usually use something to flatten it out, but as usual, I don't actually have anything here. I don't think I've got anything in here either, have I? Okay, back. I've got actually just this little jar here. I just need something just to roll it out a bit thinner. So, I've rolled this bit out, it doesn't matter about that bit. And then I actually just cut, uh, let me get a better cutter here, a small diamond shape out. And then I just round off the edges and squeeze it out. Remember, leaves are not a perfect shape. Uh, we'll give it a little curl, this one. And then basically all I do is I just imprint a little line down the middle. And then little markings up the side and it just goes on like that very simple but it's quite effective and a lot of people like it on this box so I'm hoping I can zoom that in enough for you to see. And then I just put them on a bit of um, greaseproof paper and pop them in the oven. So I hope that's given you some ideas. There's lots of ideas you could do, but the clay is such a nice added extra if you want to add a bit of colour into something as well. So, and I'm going to show you the ones that I've actually got here now done. This is the ones, these are all baked ready for gluing on. Now you do get a, like a glaze finish on it, but I'm going to be, um, once I glue them on, I'm going to be using a lacquer and the lacquer covers them absolutely fine. I only use a light coating anyway, and it's just something really to stop the, the just to give them a little bit more shine as well. So anyway, I really hope that you can see those okay. And we'll come back when the box is done and we'll have a, a good look at them all glued on. Okay, that's the box all finished. Uh, glued the little apples and that on and um, sand sealed and then uh, gave a lacquer finish I'm quite pleased the way the dark woods come out um, I quite like the, the dark and the light contrast the apples um, I'll turn this up to the side so you can see it from that angle but the, the apples that they're just a little bit of a just something different on a box really um, they hold quite well with epoxy um, so they shouldn't be too much of an issue in the future and they're actually solid they, they, they go solid like beads once they're put in the oven so anyway that's it all done I'm very pleased with it um, I should go away and get some pictures for you for after and um, I hope you enjoyed this project really. I tried to show you as much as I could without showing you all the little bits that you probably know how to do um, and just in order to make it a shorter video because some of the videos I've had, they've been two or three, three videos long um, but I wanted to get this into one video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Um, if you did, give me that thumbs up. If you didn't, give me the thumbs down. Um, any questions just pop them below 
and uh, if you've not subscribed yet please press that subscribe button and thanks very much for watching